a box made with no expensive tools, no fancy wood, no special joinery, not even held together with anything but nails. Would that be worthwhile making? I think so, yeah. Okay, so first of all, I really love all kinds of boxes, whether they're made with box joints or dovetails or mitered corners. I think they're great because they hold things and they're functional and they look neat. I mean, who doesn't like a box? But the thing is, I really like simple boxes just as much as I like fancy ones. You know, the kind of rustic ones, more traditional ones that perhaps you put tools in and hold things and actually use and that don't just sit on a shelf and look pretty, like many boxes that woodworkers make actually do. Now, I'm sure there are lots of people out there who are sitting on the couch thinking, you know, I'd really like to get into woodworking. I'd really like to try it out. But then you get stopped in your track because you think, nah, you know what, it's too expensive. I don't have the right tools. I don't have the right wood. I don't have blah, 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 blah. But then I would say, yes, you do. You probably do. And this is the project for you. This is a very simple project. But the thing is, it still requires skill. It's all about doing it right. Um, I mean, it's not about just throwing boards together and nailing things together and not getting a very good result. Um, it's about being very careful and utilizing a couple of techniques and tricks uh, to avoid mistakes and to get good results. So I thought let's go over how to make a very, very simple box and how to make it well. You know, sometimes I think that nails and screws, they get kind of a bad rep. Like, I don't know, they're not real woodworking, they're not dovetails or whatever. Um, but using only nails uh, is kind of a challenge. Can you take something as simple as basic wood and nails and make something pretty great? Uh, because even though this is very simple, I think it is beautiful in its simplicity. Like, that's the point. It's rustic, but it's simple, and let's make it really well. So you don't need a whole lot of tools to make this. I'm using a saw to cut up the wood, drill and drill bits to pre-drill, um, a hammer, some measuring tools, a chisel to clean the box up a little bit, and some pliers to bend the nails. And I think that's about it. We're gonna use finishing nails. I'm using like one and a quarter to one and a half inches in length. <laughs> I'm using soft wood. Um, this is pine. And I'm using slightly thinner wood for the top and the bottom and slightly thicker wood for the sides. But whatever you have access to, uh, it doesn't really matter so much. Since we're not using any glue here, I'm gonna use a hook technique to hook the nails in on the side here uh, to hold the lid together, which is kind of a neat little trick. Now, when it comes to making a box, I think that the size of box should always really be determined by the wood that you have to work with. And of course, what it is that you're planning to put inside of it. Just make the box a good width in terms of like two or three or four boards, however, you know, wide they are. And once you have determined your depth, like think, okay, how long do I want that in relation to that? And I'm just using butt joints here, which means that the pieces are just butting up together. There's no actual joinery. They don't fit into each other. We have the nails that are attaching them to each other. So this, these long sides um, are the same length as the box, as are the pieces for the lid and the bottom, and the sides just fit in here. It's always a good idea to uh, look at the current wood that you have and see if you need to make any fresh cuts because sometimes they're not quite straight and it's really annoying if you have like a little gap because the, the factory edge wasn't that straight. Now if you don't have any power tools or anything like that, uh, you can just cut everything by hand which is what I'm doing in here. I actually find it really relaxing to, to think that I can just cut whatever I need uh, in here without making a lot of dust or anything like that. I'm using a bench hook here for support, but you can use clamps to clamp the wood down or whatever you need to do. Um, it doesn't really matter. Now to assemble this box together, I'm going to be using finishing nails. Um, and the ones I'm using are like one and a quarter to one and a half inches long. And you wanna make sure that they're not too like thick in diameter so that they're kind of bendable. So you can use pliers to bend them over later. 
And when it comes to assembling the box, the, the number one thing to think about, little trick, is to make sure to pre-drill. Because it really sucks when the wood splits. And that happens relatively easily. Especially if you're using thinner wood and when you're going into end grain. So what I like to do is, first of all, um, measure out and mark out exactly where I want my nail holes. I find that that's one of the things that really sets like a neat box apart from a not so neat box. Like if you first take the time to measure and mark out where all the nail holes should go so that they are like, evenly distributed. And once I know where my nail holes are, then I pre-drill all the way through. And I'm using a drill bit that is just a touch smaller in diameter than the nails that I'm going to use. And definitely smaller than the nail head, because you don't want the nail to go, you know, all the way through. So I drill the first piece the wood is going through all the way, and then I match it up to the piece that is going into the second piece of wood and I drill through a little bit there as well. Not too far because then the nail won't have anything to go into but just a little bit so that the wood doesn't split. I mean, this is a classic design. This is what somebody would do in the past when maybe they um, were shipping something off and they needed to make a box really quickly that would hold the object um, to fit just right. And they didn't have time to let the glue dry or anything like that. They needed to just, you know, nail together a box really quickly and make sure that it held really well. Once I have my sides together, I do the same thing there. Um, I mark out where the holes should go. I pre-drill and I nail in the nails to connect the bottom pieces to the sides. Now, when it comes to the lid, uh, since we're not gonna nail the lid shut to the box, uh, we need some way to uh, connect these three pieces of wood. Since we're not using glue, we're not gluing a panel together. So we're gonna use like two pieces of wood here um, to connect the pieces, kind of like a strap. And I'm just splitting one of these pieces in half um, to make it a little bit smaller and then cleaning it up a little bit with a chisel as well. And a chisel is really great to have on hand just to clean up your wood. And I like to make sure that it's sharp and strop it um, before using, just to keep that edge clean. Because the difference between working with a sharp chisel and a dull chisel like makes all the difference in the world. But in terms of connecting this strap now, I think this is kind of the key with this whole box. And the way that I'm doing that is I'm using a slightly bigger drill bit uh, still not where the nail head, it needs to be bigger than the drill bit. But I drill all the way through both pieces of wood and then I bring the nails in. Now I want to use pliers and make a little hook. Um, and you can also kind of use a hammer and tap to you get that hook and then bring that hook into the wood. And that really just secures the nail um, because what you wouldn't want is to use like really short nails where um, it's just coming down a little bit or you wouldn't want to have the nails like poking out so you can hurt yourself on the other side. And then I just try to make this neat but I don't care too much. I mean it's like a functional box and this is the underside of the lid. Of course, you could also add this little detail um, on the underside if you wanted to do. But then you would want to do it where you start driving the nail in on the top side again and then do with the hook onto these straps because you don't want to see the hook. A hook is really, you know, visually not as neat looking. The important thing is to not use nails that are too thick, that are too hard to bend. Um, and also not use too short nails because uh, then it's also really hard to bend them. Now to connect the lid to uh, the box, I'm using some hinges here. These are just basic hinges, no big deal. And I decided to put the hinges on the back of the box. Uh, you could also inset them inside, but then you would have to clean out a little area to make sure that the lid sits like right on the box. And putting them on the back, if the hinges are small enough, is a little easier, a little bit quicker. Okay. 
Once I have my hinges on, I'm just cleaning up the box a little bit with the chisel. Um, just softening the edges, kind of adding a chamfer. And this just so you don't like scratch yourself or you know, if you're moving it around, you don't want any sharp corners or edges. And then you have a box and it didn't take forever. Like you could do this in an afternoon. Now this kind of box, I think lends itself really well to keeping your tools in. Perhaps you have like a little growing hand tool collection. Uh, that would be really nice. Or like gardening tools or any kind of hobby, like a little place to keep your things neat and protected. Um, but then actually using it, you know, actually don't, don't just let it sit on a shelf, like make sure it's for something that you actually use and bring out and I don't know, it's just kind of neat. Like I'm looking at it here and I see the nails and I see, you know, the wood, obviously it is like there's some knots in it. There's some holes in it. I recycled this wood. I had used this wood for other projects in the past. I, you know, decided to rip that off. I cut off the bad sections. I actually ended up using the pieces that were the worst um, on the bottom. So like the ones that were the most holes are in the bottom and knots. But the thing is, I don't think that's such a big deal. So I hope you enjoyed this little project. Uh, let me know if you decide to make something like this and make sure to share it with me. I would love to see you. Um, hope you're doing well. I'll see you soon. Bye.